Hi everybody, Azim Premji is undoubtedly one of the most respected businessmen in India. In the past 40 years, Wipro has had such an explosive growth that a 1000 rupees investment in Wipro in 1980 would be worth 45.2 crore rupees today. But while most of us are familiar with Azim sir's philanthropic moves, hardly any of us know that Wipro in the early days was a vegetable products company which went by the name Western India Vegetable Products Limited. But today, it has transformed into such a humongous IT giant that it recruits more than 200,000 employees, is located in more than 110 countries and generated a revenue of $8 billion in 2020 alone. The question is, how did a vegetable products company go on to become such a big IT giant? What exactly was Azim Sir's business strategy? And more importantly, what are the business lessons that we need to learn from this extraordinary businessman? Before we move on, I want to thank our knowledge partners for today's episode and that is Cuckoo FM. But more on this at the end of the video. This is a story that dates back to 1966, when just before Premji was about to complete his engineering at Stanford, his father passed away unexpectedly. Postponing his graduation, he returned to India to lead his family business, which back then was mainly based on producing Vanaspati. Immediately after arriving, he started diversifying his business and started dwelling into consumer products such as soaps, shoes, light bulbs and even hydraulic cylinders. And in 1977, he also renamed the company as Wipro. Later on in 1979, when the Indian government asked IBM to leave the country, he began steering the company towards the computer business because IBM had left a huge market that needed to be captured. So Wipro started establishing a number of successful international partnerships in the 1980s to help it build the computer hardware for sale in India. But during the same time in 1978, liberalization happened in China because of which the Chinese started to offer an ultra cheap labor rate which made it extremely difficult for the players in the hardware market to survive. And that is when, ladies and gentlemen, Azim Premji started to diversify into software development. Now, if you take a step back and look at the timeline of these IT giants like Wipro, Infosys and even Tech Mahindra, you will see that they began to witness exponential growth somewhere in the late 80s and in the early 90s. If you see, if something gives rise to a series of billion dollar companies in the same time period, it is definitely not a coincidence. There is always something very special about that time that turned these companies into billion dollar companies. The question is, what was this gold rush all about? Well, as it turns out, during that time, the cost of human resource in the computer industry in the United States started to increase rapidly. As a result, outsourcing became very, very important for the American companies to survive in the market. Now, if you observe closely, this did not just happen with coding or development, but with every other industry that has achieved maturity. Every industry first originates in the home ground and as it achieves accelerated growth, the cost of labor increases drastically, which eventually decreases their profit margins, making outsourcing extremely important. And whichever country or company is able to make this outsourcing possible for these companies goes on to hit a gold mine and makes a billion dollars. In the 40s and the 50s, when the textile industry needed outsourcing, Hong Kong and South Korea became opportunist and made a billion dollars. In the 1980s, when the electronics and manufacturing based industries needed outsourcing, China became an opportunist and made a trillion dollars to turn itself into a superpower in just 40 years. Similarly, when the computer industry needed outsourcing, Azim sir and Nanayan Muthi sir were two of the few people who could build an extraordinary system to make outsourcing possible for American companies. And they delivered world-class service at the cheapest rate possible using something called the global delivery model. The question is, what exactly does it mean and how does the global delivery model work? Now this concept is an extremely complex concept, but I'm going to give you an oversimplified example to help you understand this model easily. So the global delivery model is a model wherein a project is divided into discrete processes and those processes are executed by different teams spread all across the world such that the project is delivered by a skilled labor force in the most cost effective way and in the quickest possible time. For example, let's say there is a media company that needs custom designed mics. Now, this company has hundreds of journalists traveling all throughout the world. They've got reporters in war stricken places like Afghanistan. They've got people reporting from protests and they've even got people reporting from disaster hit places like the Katrina in the United States. So let's say they need a special mic that can be used in all these conditions. 
This is when they will go on to approach an audio technology company to get these special mics designed. And this is how the project will be executed. Firstly, the sales and market research team from Europe will meet with the media company to know all of their requirements. They will start taking notes that the media company wants a waterproof mic that needs to be sturdy enough to withstand a lot of falls. And at the same time, it also needs to capture the voice of the anchor without recording the noise from the background. Apart from that, it also must be small enough to plug into the collar and should have very less wires to avoid entanglement. Then all these requirements are sent to the engineering team in the United States where they design the mic in order to meet the accurate specifications using their R&D and product design skills. And then based on the design of the mic, the engineering team would present a list of materials that are needed to manufacture the mic. And this will include transistors, capacitors, carbon granules, metal and so on and so forth. And this is when the global supply chain unit will come in and will start procuring raw materials from suppliers all across the world. For example, they will procure metals from China, semiconductors from Hong Kong and transistors from Singapore. And after that, all these materials will be shipped to China for assembly. Why? Because China has the cheapest labor rates in the world. After that, Testing will also be done in China itself. Eventually, faulty pieces will be eliminated. And after quality check, the final products are sent to the media company in Europe. Then the media company will run a pilot and eventually the audio tech company will also give them a 24 seven support team that will operate from India to help them with any difficulty or problems that they are facing. Along with that, they will also give them an annual follow up to upgrade or to add more mics as per their changing requirements. Therefore, if you look at this system, it was not executed by one team, but by a series of teams located in different places as per the cost and expertise such that they all coordinate together to deliver the final product to the client. This is what you call as the global delivery model. And just like this, Azim Premji specialized in establishing a super efficient global delivery model for software development such that when the market in America matured and liberalization happened in India, due to low labor costs, Azim Sur was able to establish a major chunk of his workforce in India, which dealt with development, customer support and testing. And today, US and Europe serve as major hubs for artificial intelligence and cloud computing for Wipro. And since cloud computing databases are located in Europe, even the infrastructure management team and hardware teams of Wipro also operate from Europe. Customer support is majorly located in Philippines, China and India and low technical development and hardware comes from China. And today, as per the requirements of the clients, teams from 110 countries come together in different permutation and combination to deliver the software services to the client as per the cost and expertise in the quickest possible manner. This is one of the primary reasons that turned Wipro and Infosys into billion dollar IT giants and eventually turned India into a major beneficiary of the IT revolution, generating more than 4.5 million jobs. And this is what brings me to the most important part of the episode and that is, what are the business lessons that we need to learn from a legend like Azim sir? Before we move on, I want to thank our partners of today's episode and that is Cuckoo FM. If you liked Azim Premji's story and if you want to listen to more such stories in your own regional language, you can use Cuckoo FM to listen to audiobooks on Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, Jack Ma and even JRD Tata. Cuckoo FM is India's leading vernacular audio learning platform and they have got audiobooks available in six regional languages. And you can get your hands on their 1000 plus hour content library by getting their annual subscription at just 399 rupees. And on top of that, you can also get a special 20% discount using the coupon code THINK20, which will bring it down further to just 319 rupees. On top of that, if you're watching this video before 5th of September, they are celebrating Teacher's Day and are offering their services at a 50% discount at just 199 rupees. So if you're somebody who wants to learn these incredible stuff in your own regional language, use the coupon code LEARN50 to get a 50% discount before 5th of September. And as usual, you can download the Cuckoo FM app from the link given in the description. Now let's move on to the lessons from the case study. Lesson number one, as an entrepreneur in this fast paced hyper connected world, it is very, very important that you keep an eye on what exactly is happening in the global markets. And more importantly, how every single major global event is going to be affecting your industry in particular. 
In this case, it was the Chinese revolution that posed as a threat to the hardware industry. And the business acumen of Azim sir to be able to spot the opportunity in the software outsourcing industry is what enabled him to build a billion dollar IT empire. Lesson number two, whenever you spot a series of billion dollar companies coming up in one particular time, always remember you are looking at a gold mine that very few people will bother to explore. In this case, it was the textile revolution in the 40s, it was the electronics and Chinese revolution in the 80s and in the 1990s, it was nothing but the global delivery model that gave rise to the Indian IT revolution. And lastly, because you guys are loving homeworks and study materials so much, I'm going to attach a research paper in the description that will help you understand the global delivery model in depth. So read through this if you find time and I would be extremely delighted if you could just drop a comment about either the learnings from the case study or the learnings from the research paper. That's all from my side for today guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.